Okay, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and good morning, dear brothers and sisters um, from uh, different places. We are uh, now staying. Welcome to our uh, webinar session. My name is Muhammad Muhibullah, PhD student from the Kulia of Economics and Management Sciences, measuring in economics. I will be moderating this session today, inshallah. Uh, we are glad to have uh, you today in the webinar session with us on conducting literature review with Atlas TI, organized by the Postgraduate Student Society and uh, Postgraduate Studies. Uh, we are honored to have Dr. Ani Munira Muhammad, I am, I am alumna and a uh, senior lecturer at School of Law, University of Uttara Malaysia, as today's speaker. So I think many of us already uh, known to her, uh, we already conducted another session uh, last February. So without further delay, I would like to request our honorable speaker, Dr. Ani Munira to uh, present uh, your session. Thank you. So if we, if we have any question, we can write in our uh, comment and also we have the uh, question and answer session after this. Uh, uh, okay, so now we uh, wait and uh, Sorry, because I am I am listening repetition and I I cannot speak properly when I am talking and also I am listening. So extremely we sorry for, hear you for that. Well, brother Mahib, don't worry. <laughs> Maybe because the live streaming at the FB uh, repeating your voice, but for us everything is fine. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. So. Uh, Okay, so it's okay, Alhamdulillah. So we all are ready now. So uh, I am welcoming our uh, speaker, uh, honorable speaker, Dr. Munira, to start your presentation. You can start. Okay, um, all right. Um, I think I am not muted. Okay, great. Um, I realized that uh, the in initial uh, intention uh, Sorry, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day, uh, everyone. Uh, I realize that we have participants from all over the world and it's not only from one uh, location. Okay, uh, It is because there's the beauty uh, of what we can turn um, hikmah. Uh, we can turn musibah into hikmah so that what we are facing here, this is worldwide pandemic. We can actually... Um, uh, take a look at it from the perspective of what's in it that is good for us. Okay, and inshallah, this is the way forward. This is the new norm that we are going to uh, undertake. Uh, first and foremost, I was need to realize that um, the initial intention was to have this session for all uh, IIUM postgraduates. Okay, but uh, later on it. Uh, it's because it's streaming uh, in YouTube as well as in uh, Facebook, I realized that we can have a lot of uh, a lot more uh, participants. I think this is one of the hikmah as well uh, that we are able to meet here today. Okay. Um, before I begin, uh, I would like to share with you something. Uh, let me just share my screen. Okay, just one more thing. I need your help. Can you do this for me, please? Okay. Uh, because uh, we are all uh, located everywhere. Okay. And if I ask you to write in the chat box as well, only people who are uh, in the chat box only will be able to respond to me. And if you respond on Facebook, then only in Facebook that we'll be able to see. Can you please uh, type in? Oh. Okay. 
Okay, can you access through www.menti.com please and put in the uh, key code? I see somebody is annotating my screen. Is it possible that you're not annotating? Okay. <sighs> Welcome, Azli from UM Lebar Pantai. Glad to have you here. The rest, can you please? I see uh, on live Zoom there are around 70 uh, uh, people, okay? And I'm sure there are many more on YouTube as well on uh, Facebook. Mubila is from Gomba, sure you are, okay? Hi Anas, you're from Pasir Putih, Kelantan. Anybody else? Azah Sri Kembangan. Amiro Terengganu. Let me just type my name. Inara from Gomba, yeah, that's my name. My name is Nira Kedah. Azamuddin AR. From UAE Gomba. We have people from UPM, IIUM, Inhut, okay, Esther from KL, Azizam from Gomba, <coughs> Virus Gomba, Hussein Ismail. Okay, we have people from uh, many parts of Malaysia, uh, but I realized at the beginning of the session there are some uh, of you who are from uh, uh, outside of Malaysia. Okay, we have Hanum from Shalam. Okay, all right. Um, thank you very much. Uh, let me just go very quickly here. Okay, oh, okay. Majority are from Gomba. We are from Selangor, Johor, Kuantan, Kota Baru. Okay, um, happy to see here. Uh, happy to see you uh, in this session that we are going to have today. Okay, um, let me just come back here. Anyway, what happened to your screen, Doctor Ani? Some, did someone did this? Damla, I need I need you to remove all the annotation. I think somebody has the annotation control on my screen. Can you do that? Yeah. Uh, Sister Shakira, can you help me? Okay. So who who done this to Doctor Ani slide? <laughs> I think uh, the host can control this. Yeah, Muhib, can you help since you are the host? Yeah, but I cannot see who did this. Okay. Uh, and the reason. Uh, so, to remove it. Can you remove it, uh, Muhib? No. Yes, I can oh, remove okay. it. No. I have the presentation control. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Sorry oh. for the technical. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, then again. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Uh, uh, can you repeat the code? Um, it's okay. You can type in the chat box. Okay. Uh, because we have uh, proceeded to the next uh, stage now. 
Okay. Um, this is the second time that I am um, invited uh, by uh, CPS uh, IIUM with the collaboration of PGSS uh, of IIUM. Uh, and I am very honored. Uh, I think by now you might have realized that I am uh, an alumna of IIUM. Uh, I received my Bachelor of Laws, and I'll be honest, from ICOL. I also uh, went for my uh, Master of Comparative Law and uh, Diploma in Sharia Law and Practice uh, from ICOL as well. And, and then I, uh, I've been everywhere, okay? And uh, at the moment, I am attached to the School of Law of University of Utara, Malaysia. Um, the uh, topic that I've been assigned to me today is a Literature Review with Atlas TI. Okay? Um, the reason why uh, this topic is chosen is because I have this great passion uh, for uh, Atlas TI because it has greatly uh, assisted me uh, in my uh, PhD process from the beginning until the end for both two purposes. The first purpose is for the purpose of my literature review and the second one is for my qualitative uh, analysis uh, of my interviews uh, which have been conducted for my uh, uh, PhD in law uh, study at UITM Shahala. Okay? And the reason uh, why uh, I am here today is to share with you all the great of what we can do with the software so that it will fit into our own purpose, okay? Um, and as you can see uh, on your screen is actually my um, uh, link, okay? There are a few, uh, two links uh, over here. Uh, the first one is on uh, qualitative uh, research. It's a, a website in, uh, in Malaysian language. Uh, and the second one is uh, my sharing on FSCI. But before I begin, I would like to uh, bring your attention to this uh, memorable um, location of IIUM itself, okay? Because I have spent uh, a lot of time uh, of my life, many years of my life, uh, at this uh, wonderful university, okay? Uh, this is the International Islamic University uh, of Malaysia. Um, uh, in located in Gomba, uh, Malaysia. Okay, and uh, in fact, I started with the uh, me going through one year matriculation center uh, at Lembah Pantai uh, in 1998 until 1999. Okay, it was uh, right after my uh, SPM, uh, and then uh, after uh, I went. I finished my uh, matriculation center studies um, in law. Okay, I went to pursue my uh, LLB honors, my uh, masters of comparative law, and diploma in Sharia law. Okay, uh, four years plus one year plus another one year uh, at Ahmad Ibrahim Kulia of Laws of IIUM Gombak. Okay, uh, throughout those years, I have also been uh, stationed uh, in uh, Mahala Sumaya. Okay. Uh, as well as uh, Mala to Saiba, okay, towards the, uh, the the completion of my studies. And when I was undertaking my uh, diploma, I was uh, staying outside. Okay. Um, uh, in fact, uh, this is supposed to be quite an interactive session where I would really encourage while we are going through uh, my sharing today, you can also practice it on your own computer if you are using, uh, assessing the session today uh, by uh, laptop or desktop, okay? Uh, I would really appreciate if you can uh, also install Atlassian on your computer, okay? So that uh, you'll be able to, um, to, to like view uh, and practice it uh, hands-on as well on your computers. Let me just put here uh, very quickly the link uh, www.atlasti.com, okay, which is uh, I hope you can see this. Okay, 
is the website for uh, this is the official website for FSCI that you can take a look at the link uh, for uh, download okay, the trial version so that you can download the trial version which is free. I can see some communication in the chat box just now uh, about the uh, installation of the FSCI software. So if you go uh, to this website, you just go uh, take a look at the orange button that says free trial version and download it. Um, it does not require any payment because it's a free trial version you can uh, practice uh, with project limitations okay um, the project limitations are uh, 10 documents that you can put in uh, 100 highlightings or quotations we call it or uh, and uh, 50 quotes okay for example and a few other limitations but it's going to be more than enough for the purpose of our uh, training today okay um, all right, so uh, what is it that I wish to share with you uh, is actually the concept of uh, uh, doing a literature review, okay? Um, put aside at least the eye first. Let's imagine ourselves going in through, into the online database of our university and keying in our keywords okay we put in our keywords because we know what are the things that we want to find okay uh, based on that we will get results right and those results are the ones that we will have to go through to read them and to see if they are relevant to be uh, contributing towards our write-up or not okay now because the topic today is literature review using hsci uh, sorry literature review using hsci it is um, it doesn't matter what type of or what methodology that you are undertaking. It doesn't matter if you're doing qualitative or quantitative. Uh, literature review is a process that we cannot run away from. Okay. Uh, having said that, uh, we still have to go through the online database in order to get the literature, and then that literature we will uh, go through. Okay. Like as you can see on the screen. Okay. Okay, all right. We're connected again. again. Yeah, I got a little bit disconnected just now. Okay, all right. Uh, coming back. These four documents are the ones that we have collected from online databases. And we um, want to go through them. Okay, so what is it that we first do when we have this document, uh, these four documents is that we are going to read through them by way of various strategies. Okay, and very famous strategies are we are going to start with highlighting the relevant sections in these uh, documents. Okay, for example, uh, we will see um, these, uh, maybe, okay, we are going focusing for the keyword of um, we are focusing for the keyword of definition, okay? And you can see the blue colored highlighting is uh, definition as mentioned in uh, document number one. Let me just annotate uh, spotlight. Okay. Now, um, and at the end of the day, we are going to get something like this, okay? First, the blue colored, let me just go back a little bit, okay? Blue colored icon is definition when we read the first document, and then we read the second and third document as well, we find the, uh, the imp important information as well, okay? We have the, um, Blue color is for definition, and then we move on and proceed. At the end of the day, we are going to have our document like this, for example, and this document will have a lot of highlightings, okay? And that is exactly what we are common 
in doing as well. Okay, and when we highlight what goes on in our mind, are the important relevant sections in that particular document. Okay, now the time has come for me to write. Can we imagine this? When we want to write, we will pick up the document in front of us. Okay, we're going to pick up. Uh, the document okay, like this and then we are going to go through any of the relevant sections talking about the parts that we want to write okay now after i'm done with a uh, document number one i will move on to document number two because i want to take a look at what have i highlighted yesterday okay, or the day before for example and then uh, i'm going to proceed with document number three and then with document number four now, you will agree with me, if four articles, this strategy will be suitable, okay? Um, okay? This strategy will be viable if we have four documents, 10 documents probably, but when it comes to 20 articles, 50 articles, maybe hundreds of articles, we are going to lose track already. We might be asking ourselves, when I'm reading article number five, I might be asking myself, I think I have read this document before, but I cannot remember where I have read that. Okay, have you ever come across this situation like this? Okay, for example, um, sometimes the articles will be quite similar to one another because when you read it, you will feel like you have encountered that before, okay? Um, now, this problem normally uh, come up, uh, normally happen if we have, we, if we do not have a system to uh, manage our literature, manage the important points in the literature, for example, okay? Now, let's just go back to this uh, example of the four uh, articles which have been highlighted okay and we find that these highlightings are important sections of our um, uh, article we might be citing them in the uh, our writer okay now, once we're done with the four articles, we will move on to another four articles. Now, I have had this situation before. I would like to share my experience because I, my background is law, okay? And I read a lot. Uh, I would say we, it's in our nature that we have to read a lot because uh, of the uh, legal training that we uh, undergo, okay? Um, but then, the same problem appears <coughs> when I was undertaking uh, academic uh, program, okay? uh, namely my PhD program. And because I read a lot, I know so many things. When I meet my supervisor for supervision, uh, she says that, Annie, you can discuss a lot of things with me. You can even correct me if I'm wrong, okay? because when we, because I read a lot, right? But the problem is I cannot write. Okay? I couldn't produce my write-up because I do not have that system. I realized that I like to write okay, on the keyboard, on the computer, only to uh, the, the output is not how it is supposed to be. Okay? Because uh, I tend to throw ideas, I tend to throw things that I have in my mind, okay? because uh, I know them, I know this information, but I do not know how to write properly based on the literature that I have already written, uh, I have already read. For example, these four articles I have already read, but the problem is I couldn't write it academically, okay, because I lost track. Okay? I couldn't remember which article says what. Now, until, of course, until I met with a software called Atlas CI. Atlas CI uh, is well known as a software for qualitative data analysis. Um, for the purpose of quantitative analysis, the software cannot help us, okay, but it can help us with qualitative analysis. And then, I ended up in a workshop uh, teaching at the CI. At that time, I had that problem with literature review, right? And then I realized that this software is, is going to be helpful for my literature review. How? Okay, now let's go back a few uh, steps. Let's go back uh, a few steps, okay? Now, these four articles, 
instead of highlighting them using the highlighter, I will now put them in soft copy format into my computer. Okay, and that uh, that document uh, I will now put into the FCI software. Uh, for articles, what I want to write, okay, for example, uh, I want to write, okay, um, I will highlight the relevant sections using my computer scissor. I do not use the highlighter, the hard copy highlighter anymore. Uh, it is because of, uh, it's, a, it's a soft copy document, right? And then I'm going to repeat the same process for the other documents as well, for the other concepts as well. For example, blue colored could be definition. Red color would could be problem. Green color could be suggestion, and yellow color could be um, way forward. Okay, for example, and uh, I will repeat the same process with the others as well. Now, up until this stage, whatever strategy that I have uh, uh, done, okay, on my traditional concept, it is the same as how I would do it in FSCI anyway. Meaning, I still have to download the article, I still have to read, I have to understand that article, and I have to know that particular paragraph talks about what concept. Yeah? Uh, the reason being, when I read the article, I do not read it bluntly. We do not read it bluntly. Okay? When we have this article in front of us, what we do is, aha, I know this particular paragraph talks about problem. This paragraph talks about definition, for example. Now, it's exactly the same process if I do it in FCI as well. Okay? But the difference is I no longer need to print out my articles. Okay? Uh, that saved me a lot of money. Okay? And a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of storage, uh, storage capacity as well. Because now, I only use it in, front, in my computer instead of using it in the uh, hard copy traditional documents. I have to buy files to put them. And hard, uh, printing is one thing. I save money on toner. I save money on printer. I save money on filing system. And um, also, okay, um, I now do not have to buy highlighter anymore. Okay, because the highlighting is be, going to be done using my computer's mouse only. Yeah, okay, using the cursor so that I can highlight it in my. Uh, computer, the software itself. Now, again, there is the first difference. Okay, the difference is no more hard copy documents. Now I'm going to use soft copy, so highlighting as well using uh, soft copy. The second difference is that now I no longer need to flip through the documents in order to take a look at what have I highlighted before. Okay, this is because once I do it inside of FSCI like this, okay. I highlight it using the computer cursor and tell FSCI, this is this part, I'm going to highlight it with definition. The second part, I'm going to highlight it with problem. The third part, I'm going to highlight it with suggestion, okay, for example. Now, <clears throat> because all this coding system has already been memorized by FSCI, it's in the system already, when I want to retrieve whatever that I have highlighted, I'm just going to give instructions to FSCI to retrieve all the highlights for me at the press of a button. Okay? I'm just going to give a press and this is what I will get. I'm going to get an output from FSCI, which is a compilation of everything that I have highlighted before for, from all of my documents and they have been arranged in the format of whatever concepts that I have highlighted before. If I have highlighted blue color for definition, so blue color will be grouped together. Red color for problem, all the statements for red color will be grouped together. Likewise, suggestions in green color, likewise the purple color or the yellow color is supposed to be, it's supposed to be purple actually. And this, they have been grouped together as a way forward. Okay. Now, can you imagine that from this format of the articles, which is in its PDF format, now I select the relevant sections, retrieve it, and put into a output from FTCI. Okay. Now, this output is in the format of 
DOC or DOCX, meaning I can fully edit it using my Microsoft Word or any word processor okay, for the purpose of my write-up for my literature review purpose. Okay, now, now, I do not need to remember where or what I have read before because at the C, I remember it for me. I also do not read to, uh, need to memorize from which article or from which document that this highlighted section comes from because at the C, I will now tell me this one, this first statement comes from document number one. This second statement comes from document number two. And the third statement comes from document number three. Now, can you imagine if I have named my article in the format of author year? Now, instead of naming this article in the format of 1.pdf, 2.pdf, I will now put it in the format of author year.pdf, author year.pdf, author year.pdf. So, what does my output look like? The output will be in the format of um, uh, it's going to be author year.pdf says what? Author year.pdf says what? And author year.pdf says what? Okay. okay. Based on that, okay, this is basically what I want to share with you today in this limited time that we have. Okay. I'm going to show you how to create a project in FCI, put in our literature, and then once all the documents are there in the project. I'm going to teach you how to do the highlighting, how to put it into the specific codes and labels. And after that, I am going to teach you how to generate this output from FTCI. Okay, very simple things I want to do. Create a project in FTCI, put all the documents. Number two, I'm going to teach you how to do the highlighting, how to put it into relevant codes, for example. And number three, I'm going to teach you how to generate the report from uh, FTCI. So far, is there any questions? I see the chat box is um, working. Hello, I am can you can you see my screen? Hmm. I have technical error here. So. Oh, okay. How come I, I can't hear you? Yeah. How to do that? Just uh, click on the three dot. Okay. Uh huh. And, and then you see. The I will just put the participants. Okay, I'm gonna show yeah. Damia. No, you you go to Dami Sister Damia's uh, uh, profile uh -huh. and click on the, the three dot. Then Does make that work, Damia? Make the essay post. Mean that it's not the full post. Right now, I'm on the uh, Can you make yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you okay. All right. Sorry. Yes. No, I was so excited speaking that I did not check the chat box. Sorry. Okay. Any questions from our participants, please? So please. So the other, can you please mute your speaker as you can hear? Noises. <clears throat> okay. Uh, what next? Chat. I'm unable to see the text. Please make me the host. Okay. The text doesn't matter for now. I just want to show you us how to highlight. The name of the software yeah, is Atlas CI. How to do the highlighting on the database. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, the host can meet the participant. This is being recorded. Okay. What's the difference between Atlas CI? Um, okay, there are a few questions here uh, in the chat box, and I would like to address uh, some of it. Okay, um, the first one is uh, I think um, our uh, organizer uh, is actually recording the session. 
I think. Okay, and yes, we can refer to it back. And in fact, they are streaming it on uh, Facebook. Okay, um, what's the difference between atlasi and in vivo? Which one is better? Uh, I think the question uh, cannot be. Uh, I, I cannot respond to this question. Uh, the reason being, I am a representative of atlasi, uh, but I can assure you that they are both working in the same group okay meaning they can help us with uh, the same features will be available in these two softwares uh, it's a matter of uh, our uh, comfort okay, in using which one based on the features that are <coughs> more convenient for your purpose <coughs> uh, if you're reading it yes you can consider it as a thematic study is it the same to Mendeley? And if our LRs are already in Mendeley, can we transfer to FTCI? Uh, uh, Hadil's question is, uh, if FTCI is similar to Mendeley, the answer is no, it's not similar to Mendeley uh, because Mendeley is for Bibliographic Reference Manager. It will help us with um, managing uh, the references and the citation. But there are the features inside of Mendeley is actually uh, not similar to FSA because FSA can help us with thematic analysis because we want to put the contents or the concepts inside of FSA into specific themes. Okay. Uh, to the second question, uh, if our LRs already in Mendeley, can we transfer to FSA? The answer is yes. I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, as I would ask, is it also similar to content analysis? Yes. If you're doing content analysis, you can analyze the content using FSA. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, all right, great. Um, next, uh, because again, I'm coming back to what are the three things uh, that I'm going to teach you. Number one is how to prepare the project for the purpose of analysis. Sorry, how to prepare the project, okay, um, by creating and adding documents. Number two, is how to work on the articles inside of our project and number three how to generate the output or the reports okay um, I'm gonna minimize this and show okay because I want to bring you to this uh, activity sheet okay because these are basically the things that I want to share in the uh, session today. I think you can still see my screen. Okay, yeah, you can. Okay, I hope you can. Um, all right. Um, there are things inside here that uh, serves as, as an outline. Okay, what I want to share. Number one, okay, is I want you to identify the relevant literature. Now, meanwhile, can I uh, know uh, if you are also working on uh, Atlasia in your own computers? Because if so, then we can do some interaction so that you can um, uh, highlight to me any problems that you may face, okay? If you already have Atlasia on your computers, that would be very good. If not, then you can uh, download uh, the Atlasia software from www.atlasia.com. Okay. <clears throat> Number one. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. <clears throat> Number one is, uh, in fact, there are fifteen uh, altogether. Uh, the things that I want to share today, okay? So let's go ahead, okay, and begin with the first one. Number one, I want to identify the relevant literature to be used as sample project. Now, you can use any document in uh, any format of your literature, okay? Example, you can have PDF, very famous is PDF, okay? And then you can also, if you have copied that information from website, for example, you can also use uh, DOC, you can also use DOCX, okay? you can also use RTF, any format for your literature. Okay? If you save the literature in the format of um, 
very common is PDF. Yes, you can straight away put it into FTCI. Okay? Having said that, um, oh, um, I will need to open this in my Windows. Okay? My desktop. Save. Okay? And second one is, I'm going to go to the desktop. Uh, today. Okay. Mm. Okay, so that I can access it. Okay, all right. So I hope you can see still see my screen. Yeah. Um I have created the presentation in Mac, so uh, I'm going to show it in Windows well because I realize that a majority of uh, Windows users in Malaysia. <coughs> okay. Uh, first one is the activity sheet. Okay. But if any of you are using Mac and you would like me to demonstrate, you can just uh, type in the chat box so that I'll be um, aware that you are also uh, one of our uh, participants using Mac. <clears throat> okay. Ah, okay, great to know that we have many Mac users are also in the uh, list of participants. Okay. Uh, so maybe I can uh, demonstrate both okay, for you the same document. Um, literature review with FSCI 8. Okay, so the first thing that I was mentioning just now is we want to take a look at the okay, identify the relevant project to be used. For this purpose, I have already created um, a sample project, okay, the ones that I will be using uh, for our session today. It is on my desktop. Okay, here it is. <clears throat> Sample documents that I'll be using, I'm just going to show you the types, the various types that we have. Okay. Um, first and foremost, we have the PDF. Okay, here is the PDF. Okay, we can see a preview over here as well. Okay. Um, and then now, let me just not preview so that you will not take so much time. Uh, another PDF, in fact, uh, from the six documents that I'll be using today, uh, five are PDF because it's very common, and the other one is Microsoft Word. Now, these six documents I want to put into HSCI for the purpose of analysis. Now, likewise, you can also identify the, set, the, the documents, the literatures <clears throat> that you want to use for your own uh, sample projects as well. Okay, now first thing that I said uh, we will do is identify the relevant literature to be used as sample project and here they are. This is for my uh, situation, for my sample project today. I'm going to use um, uh, this uh, sample project, a sample document. I have uh, named various types. Okay, the first type I have named it author year okay and here is also another author year and the others i have named it accordingly based on what does that article talk about why because i want to show you the difference when it is uh, imported into FCI later on okay how it will look like okay um some if we have named it author year the output will be showing author year say what if I have put it in the format of importance of sports blog, for example, it's going to be importance of sports blog, say what? Yeah, so uh, let's take a look at which one is more practical okay, later on. We're done with number one. <laughs> I think we might be finishing this early. Okay? Uh, number two, <clears throat> we want to create a project in FSCI. Okay? Creating a project in FSCI, it goes, uh, it depends on the uh, version that we are using. Okay, I'm just going to go to click quickly. Okay. Yes. If you have installed Atlas Windows on your computer, 
So it's gonna be okay. Atlas CI windows will be like this. Okay, this is the icon for Atlas CI windows. Just bring it to the center here. Atlas CI 8 is the current version for uh, uh, the software. If you are using 5, 6, or 7, uh, might be it's time for you to upgrade uh, to version 8 because version 8 has the uh, most uh, features inside. If you are using MacBook, okay, this is the icon. <clears throat> oh, I'm gonna close the project again. Okay, all right. This is the interface for Atlas CI Windows. Okay. Atlas CI Windows um, has two options, the ones that you can see uh, on your screen. Okay. okay, here it is. Two options, the first one is to create a new project and the second one is to import project, okay? Because our SSS now at number two is create a project in NCCI, okay? Because we have not started using it yet, we want to use it, so we are going to create a project in NCCI by clicking on create a new project. Likewise, in Mac as well, this is the interface for uh, Mac. <clears throat> Okay. The interface for Atlas CI Mac, we have two options as well here. We can create a new Atlas CI project or we can import an Atlas CI project. Now, on your right hand side for Mac, it is your list of projects that you have created before. If this is the first time you're using, you don't have to worry about this part. But if you have multiple projects like mine, we're going to have, I see a lot of uh, projects on my uh, Atlas CI Mac, for example, they have been arranged in the format of date modified. So the last time that you have saved the project is going to be on top. The uh, even if you have saved something uh, even later, okay, latest ones is going to be on top again. Okay, likewise in Windows as well. <clears throat> on my left hand side here, they are the projects that I have created and arranged based on date modified. Okay, and the list of projects here are arranged based on alphabetical order okay now but you don't have to worry about that what we want is we want to create a new project okay because the second instruction is create a new project let's do that <clears throat> the project name okay my literature review Oops. my literature review project <clears throat> While it's loading, I'm just going to run here very quickly in order to create another project in my literature review project. Okay. Create them. Okay, All right, here it is. <clears throat> okay. Now, this is the interface of Atlas CI project. And uh, as any other Windows application, you will see some similarity here because if you're familiar with Microsoft Word, for example, which has ribbons on top, so here we have different tabs. We have file, home, search projects, analyze, okay, import, export, okay, as well. Now, uh, because there are so many uh, tabs with different ribbons and more, sometimes we might get lost. We do not know where we should be. So we should always remember to return to home because home has the most frequently used uh, items. Okay? Uh, and on my left hand side here, on your left hand side, you're going to see the project itself, uh, the project object. Okay? And here is the navigator which will show you what are the objects inside of the project. Okay? Here I have document zero. Code zero, memo zero, it is because it's a new project. We have not added in anything yet. The moment we put one document, the number will be different. We put one code, it's going to be one here. Now we can keep track of how many literatures that we have collected yeah, for the purpose of our research. 
and therefore it will uh, we'll be able to keep through lah how many keep track okay, of how many documents that we have likewise in mac as well once you have created the project you're going to see uh, a lot of options here you can see a lot of options on top here okay on the menu bar you will also be able to see this bar here this is the manager bar and then on your left hand side is the same okay, the same as windows but this is the navigator which will show us the objects inside of our project okay done okay very easy now okay um, i think for administrative purpose uh, our organizer can help me to uh, address uh, the the version okay um i can say it's not a freeware it's a shareware uh, freeware is you can use uh, the open source but it is shareware meaning uh, the full version uh, uh, it's a paid uh, software, but uh, you can try the trial version, which is uh, it has no time limit. Okay, the time the the trial version has no time limit, but it has a limit as to the project size, how many documents you can put in, how many um, highlightings that you can do, how many codes that you can create. Okay, right now we're done. Number one and number two, we're done. Let's move on to number three. Number three, now comes the interesting part where we want to add literature to the project. Okay, number three, I want to add literature to the project. We can use the import function, which will enable us to open the document manager. Now, let's go to our HCF project. At home tab, you are going to see the new option here. When we want to create a new document, for example, you just go to document when you want to create another entity for example codes memos or networks you can click on new uh, new entities new network or new code or new memo okay for example now let's get the hit okay uh, let's go on with uh, adding documents i'm just gonna uh, i can click on the icon here which it will open a document loader for me for me to choose which document that i want or I can also click on the drop down menu over here. Okay, so it will give me more options. I can choose add file, I can choose add folder contents, I can choose add linked video or new geo document. For the purpose of the demonstration, I'm going to choose add documents. Okay, click on it, and from this window, I can go to my desktop and choose the folder that I have identified for. It contains my literature, yeah. I'm going to click on my literature and I'm going to highlight them all because I want to put these all six documents into FSCI. I'm going to click on open. The system is now adding the documents to the project. Yeah. They're converting the documents. Okay, while it's adding the documents here, I will also go to my uh, MacBook. Yeah, this is the Mac, uh, FTCM Mac. If I want to add documents to the project, of course, there are multiple uh, options, uh, multiple ways, but I'm just going to show you the um, most frequently one. Okay, the easiest way how to do it is to go through the plus sign over here. Click on the plus sign, and you will see all options you can. Click plus sign in order to import documents, import link documents, new geo document, for example. I'm going to click on import documents and choose the same folder. But here I think one document is not supported. Example. This is importing. Documents are available. Okay. 
Hmm. Oh, it's the second document then. This should be it. Okay, great. I managed to add the documents to my project here. So I can click on the small triangle beside the document here so that all my documents will be shown. So when I want to take a look at the documents, I will simply double click on it and the document will be shown on my right hand side over here. I'm just gonna go there, make it bigger, okay. right? Likewise, okay. click on the documents and it will show me the document. Contents. Likewise here. Okay. And this one as well. And the same thing also happens in our Windows uh, project because when I click on the small triangle beside Windows here, it will um, it will list down, yeah, it will expand the list of documents that I have. Double clicking on that document will actually happen open the document in front of us like this. So I have a Word document here. Here's the Word document. Here is another PDF and PDF and PDF. Now, can you take a look at the interface of this FSCI software? The interface goes yeah, like this. This is our document. And there is an empty area on your right hand side here. This empty area, we call it as a margin area. This is the margin area where all codes and memos will appear. Okay? Because of that, it reflects the pen and paper concept. What does it mean? If this is your hard copy article, okay? this is the part that you have the article. And on your right hand side is the part that you will put in the names of the themes in Timothy analysis, right? You're going to put highlight definition, highlight problem, highlight suggestion, for example. Likewise, in FSCI, we can highlight on the document itself and on the margin area, all our codes and memos will appear. <clears throat> oh. Um, we have a question from Azah. Uh, Dr. Azah asks, if we have student license, which is better, one chapter of thesis, um, one project, or one project for the whole thesis? Okay, it's actually up to you. You can uh, create multiple projects. Maybe this project is for the first chapter, the second project is for the second chapter, for example, or you can also have them in uh, the same uh, project. I think I need to ask Brother Muhib to help me here. Uh, Brother Muhib, somebody is still annotating on my screen. Can you help me to clear uh, all annotations, uh, please? Who, who is doing this? I, I don't know. <laughs> Can you please click uh, to, there is a button for you to clear annotations, clear all drawings. Uh, but okay. this sh screen sharing, uh, only you can monitor. Oh, I think. Oh, okay. Mm, yeah, all right. Um, well, I help you to do that, but uh, Annie, don't worry. I I help you to clear clear the annotate. <laughs> don't don't worry. Is that Sister Shakira? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, but uh, from my own experience, I have one project for the entire thesis. Yeah. The reason being, if I have one article Kaposi et al. Okay, I might mention that in chapter one. I will mention that in chapter 2 and I'm, again, I'm going to mention that in chapter 5. Okay? Uh, if I put it into different projects, I have to read the article three times. But if I put it in one project, I will mention it one time only. But we can structure it in a way after this that your code names will be following your chapters. Okay? We're going to have quotes for chapter 1, quotes for chapter 2, quotes for chapter 3 but it falls back to the same document. 
Yeah, we should be very helpful. It's a strategy that we'll do it. Uh, Tanzina is uh, asking, can we use this software for citation and bibliography like Mendeley? The, uh, quest, the, the answer is no, okay? Because FACI will not be able to do the citation uh, and bibliographies. So that's why I always recommend us using both, okay? Uh, please pick one software from the um, uh, bibliographic reference manager group and another software from the qualitative group. Okay? For example, a bibliographic group is Mendeley and Note RefWorks, for example. It will help us to manage the literature and manage the references and bibliographies. But you cannot do the qualitative analysis or the thematic analysis, so we're going to go for qualitative software such as Atlas CI, MaxQDA, and Vivo, for example. Pick one from each group. I myself, from my experience, I have used Atlas CI and EndNote. Okay, I'm not sure uh, about your institution if you're using Mendeley or EndNote, okay, but I'm going to demonstrate them both uh, after this. Um, Karen was asking, do the highlights from one project transfer to another project or I have to highlight all over again? Yes, you have to highlight all over again if you are um, having them in different uh, projects. Okay, uh, so that's why we have to strategize before we begin so that uh, we can have one project. But then again, you can, after you have done highlighting, you find that this article is also useful for another project that you want to use. You have already highlighted 10 documents, for example. You can save as the project. Save the project as. Go to the project and choose save as so that you can have save as like, like we're saving uh, our document. Uh, document. Uh, you create one document and then you save as to have a duplicate of another version that you want to work on it. Okay. All right, okay, so let's uh, move on. Uh, okay, good, good questions from our friends. Now, what is the significance of adding the documents to the project? Now, like I said, we start to work on the soft copy of the documents. So we're going to have a centralized location. There's no more the issue of, I think I accidentally left my article at the office or I left it in my car, for example, because now it's all in one central location, okay? Uh, all right, so we can take a look at our documents. Now, after we have added all the documents to the project, there is a second uh, option that uh, we will do. Okay, let me just go very quickly. Um, okay, we can see all our documents in the document manager. Yeah, we have already imported the documents. We can now open the document manager by clicking on documents over here. Click on my documents, and I'll be able to see all my documents together with the other um, uh, information as well. For example, media type, what is the media type, and what is the location. Okay, now, um, now uh, number four, I think. Okay, number four. Now, I want to group the literature based on their shared characteristic. Obviously, because sometimes we're going to have documents that have shared characteristic. I won't say based on categories. Why? Because there are um, some document could be falling under multiple characteristic. Yeah? For example, that article is published in the year 2019 by Malayan Law Journal in uh, the, the data collection was conducted in Singapore and the journal of oh, and the journal name is, yeah, journal name Lay Law Journal. Okay, publisher is a different uh, publisher, as well as other characteristics. Who is the author, for example? Now, the significance of doing this is if you're familiar with literature review metrics, we also have the uh, different columns for this uh, characteristic. Yeah, the document name, the author, the year the theory engaged, the data collection, the methodology undertaken, for example. So all these are actually um, um, uh, characteristics for the document. Now, because we want to group the literature based on the shared characteristic, this entails that we want to do 
within case analysis as well as cross case analysis. I want to do analysis whether all the documents published in 2019 are, uh, what is the pattern of discussion in 2019 articles? What is the pattern of discussion in um, Singapore journals? Okay? In uh, the, if the data collection is conducted in Malaysia, okay, what is the pattern of that? This one within case analysis. The second one is I want to do cross case analysis because I want to know from Malaysia and Singapore what could be the difference pattern of discussion in Malaysian articles as well as uh, as opposed to Singapore articles. Okay, for example, or methodology. I want to know if case study articles or past research conducted using case study will have the same pattern of discussion in their literature from articles using concept paper okay case study concept paper experimental for example okay now um having mentioned that okay i want to teach you how to group our literature based on shared characteristic okay let's uh, let us move on to uh, let us move on to the application Uh, okay, this is a very good question. Uh, why accuracy I refuse to add the document? Mm, are you um, if the format is not supported? Okay, like mine, uh, probably the PDF document just now uh, is uh, corrupted or uh, it is not having the correct uh, formatting okay so i will normally just print out that document again into the format of pdf so that i can put it into uh, at this end how about a document in hard copy only do we must scan it first you have multiple options you can scan it okay or you can also summarize it in microsoft word and then put it okay or you can just take a uh, picture and put it uh, as well pages because if it's a very thick book you might uh, have to take some time uh, to scan it so you might want to take the relevance of purchase the answer is yes okay because if you have it's like you're using uh, microsoft word okay you are going to save that project save that word document okay even if the version that you're using is trial so tomorrow if your version expires the document will be still still be there in order to be able to edit and save the document again so you will need to upgrade to the full version of microsoft word okay, so that you can um, that document will still be there okay all right good now um, uh, how to group the literature based on shared characteristic let us go to here okay in our document manager, we can take a look at the documents and see if there is any characteristic. Okay? Like my document number two, it is a blog. Okay? I've taken it from blog. So documents number two, four, and five are actually blogs. So I want to group this blog into the group of blog. So you will see on my left hand side here, I have this column for document group okay and this is um the document group okay um at the moment we don't have any you can either right click in order to create a new group okay yeah we can do that but we can actually go to yeah we can select the documents that we want and drag them to the left hand side like this okay and the system will allow us to create that group using the documents that we have highlighted just now so i'm not going to put it blog post okay, this is our blog post click on create and here it goes okay which is blog post with three in bracket it means the size of that group is three so that Later on, I can just click on the group name and only the documents within that group will be shown. I click on another place again and it will show me all the other groups. But I do realize that I have missed 
putting one document, okay? I have missed putting document number three. Document number three, three is also a blog post. So I will now not drag and put it here, but I'm going to drag and put it over here. So it will just add on to the list. Now blog post has four members of that project, okay? Now, we can also do it based on year. For example, this one is in the year 2015. And this one is in the year of 2003. Example. It will help us to see if that document uh, belonging into which particular group, group. As well as when we do this, the group names will appear in the code manager here, a group man, a document manager here. So it will help us to show um, the, the grouping for that particular document. Okay, I hope you are all okay. Uh, likewise in Mac, okay. In Macbook as well, in order to open the document manager, I will simply double click on the word document here. Okay, or I can just click on document manager button here. Okay, click on document or you can just go to document on top here. But I'm not going to show you all the uh, ways how to do it. Otherwise, it would be confusing. So we just can stick to one method, but you can do it by trial and error after this. In order to save the, okay. All right, next, I'm gonna do this. Uh, I will, okay. Here, all these are, I can do a multiple selection and drag them likewise, just similar like the process in Windows, I can just drag and drop here, and the system will ask me what is the document group name that I want. These are blog posts. The size is three. So click on it, and I will just see the three documents within that group. Okay, likewise here, 2015 is the year 2015. Likewise here, is in the year 2015. Okay, right. I hope this will be helpful. I'm just going to run very quickly to the chat box and see. Uh, can one document be in different two groups? Yes, yes, yes. I can't hear anything. Can you help me? Okay, please check the device. Okay. All right, good. So, um, that's it. Okay. From time to time, we'll go through here, okay, but if you're using the full version, it will have a auto recovery save, okay? Uh, just in case the, there is a blackout or uh, our computer dies for, uh, for that matter or the battery went out, okay? So it will uh, save the project as well, like with this one, okay? and I'm going to save the project. Right, good. Okay. Number four, okay, we have so far, we have added uh, literature based on the PDF that we have or the DOC that we have. You know, in, in order to answer one uh, question from our participant just now about adding the literature from Mendeley or EndNote, okay, what is the difference between the two and all? I've already explained what is the differences, but I have not shown you yet, so I'm now going to show you. In order to input for the references from Mendeley or EndNote, the strategy is to go, uh, do I have it here? Okay, PowerPoint. I'm just gonna type it so that will be easier for us. Okay. Oh, I'm just gonna type it here so that Okay, import references. What we do is actually we are going to prepare the references in Mendeley first, okay? In Mendeley, or EndNote, okay, I am going to select the references, and then I'm gonna add to export as, XML. Yeah, XML is an extension for a file exchange format so that 
from Mendeley, it will move, it is for easier transportability from Mendeley or to FCI. And then save the SML file in FCI. I'm gonna import the XML. Okay, I hope that is clear. Okay, this is the strategy that we will use. What is the benefit of doing this? So that if you have three or four documents in PDF, so you can just put it into FCI, import it into FCI. But if you have tens or hundreds, so it might be a problem for you in order to add the documents individually. Okay, so we're gonna add them in bulk from our FCI, uh, from our Mendeley or EndNote. This is the first one. The second reason is in Mendeley or EndNote, there are meta information. Meta information such as author, year, document name, publisher name, for example, they are actually, this meta information can be added to FCI as, um, as groups, okay, document groups. Articles published in 2015 from Mendeley will be grouped automatically. Articles published in 2017 will be grouped automatically. Articles published in Malayan Law Journal will be published, will be grouped automatically. Yeah? So now, no more drag and drop that article into the specific groups, but we are going to uh, automatically group them using the meta information from uh, Mendeley itself. Oh, wow. Oh. Uh, are the highlights in the file will be maintained? Are the highlights in the file will be maintained at all group folders? If there are, uh, from Mendeley, if you have highlighted it, uh, it will not be brought in uh, to uh, at the CI unless you have saved it in the initial PDF. So that initial PDF must be highlighted, then only it will be uh, added to the at the CI project. Okay? All right, good. So this is what we will do, these three things, okay? We are going to prepare the XML file in Mendeley and then or in Node, and then we are going to import that XML file into FSCI. For this purpose, I'm gonna practice on Mendeley desktop and I'm also gonna practice on EndNote, okay? Likewise, we have Mendeley as well. Here it is. Okay, I'm just going to make it bigger so that you will see it. Make it bigger. Sports. Okay, these are the example documents that I have. Likewise, in EndNote, okay, these are the example documents that I have. So you will see. Um, this is the interface of uh, EndNote X6 uh, and this is the interface for Mendeley. Okay? Now, how do I know this document has full text? Because I have the PDF icon over here and I can select the document. So the strategy is select the, the, the references and then export it to XML. So um, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to select the document. So I have to be selective here because um, some of you are testing out at the CI using the trial version, so you are limited to 10 documents only. Okay, so even though I have the full version, so I'm just not going to exceed 10, okay, uh, out of respect for our friends. So I'm just going to highlight uh, a few uh, documents uh, based on different characteristics. Okay, some have shared characteristics, some have different characteristics. For example, I'm going to choose two documents from 2015. Okay, just bring a plus. <clears throat> so you will see here, uh, I have chosen two documents <clears throat> published in 2015. <clears throat> the first one is from Springer Plus and the second one is from BMC Public Health. Likewise, I'm going to choose two documents as well from 2016. Okay. Two documents from 2016 and one from BMC Public Health and the other one is from Springer Plus also. So it turns out that there will be two documents from 2016, two documents from 2015, two from Springer Plus and two from BMC Public Health. 
Okay? Why? Because I want to demonstrate it to you once I put it to FSCI. FSCI will automatically group these documents based on their shared characteristics. If you have the full version, you can run on more than 10 documents. Uh, you can have um, uh, hundreds, okay? tens of hundreds of documents do at one import export of the SML and those hundreds of documents will be added to your FSCI project. Okay? Now, the idea is I have already selected these documents. Now I want to export them into the format of XML. Okay? Right click, export, okay? right click, or you can just go to tools, export over here. Okay? Right click to export. <clears throat> I'm going to put into the desktop. Okay? Here is the desktop. And then I'm going to what is most important is we have to change the format into XML. Okay? At the moment, the default is bib.bib, so I'm going to change it to XML. Here it is. Make sure the extension is .xml. I'm now also going to change the name because I need to create both. Okay? Um, references from Mendeley. Okay. .xml, save it on my desktop, save. Let's take a look at how it looks like. Here it is. References from Mendeley. Okay, why? Because I now I need to create references from a note. Yeah. Also, I'm going to choose two documents from the, the same year, 2015. Plus, one from 2016, the other one from uh, 2015. Yeah. I'm just going to change. Okay, here I'm going to go to Gerontologist. Okay. Um, two documents 2015, one 2016, one 1998. Okay. And different journal names, Gerontologist, Public Health, as well as Springer Plus. Now, again, the idea is we want to bring in that meta information from Mendeley or Ennote into FTCI okay, in the form of XML. We're going to go to Tools, sorry, File, Export, okay, and Save as Type. We're going to change it to XML. And then I'm going to change the name because I need to show you the difference between. Uh, the, the, the different file formats, uh, not the same format, but different SML for Mendeley, different SML for uh, EndNote. Okay? Here is going to be a reference from EndNote. See. On my desktop, here it is. The first one is reference from Mendeley and the second one is reference from and not these other ones that I'll be using for my SCI uh, project. Again, likewise, in Mac, you can also create this SML file because we want to bring it into FTCI Mac as well. Yeah, after this. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I will import that XML file. Okay, we have already done in uh, Mendeley or EndNote. We have already selected the references, exported them as XML file, and saved that XML file on my desktop. Now we are going to import that into FTCI okay, by clicking on the import XML, uh, FTCI. Okay. Import export. I'm going to choose reference manager. Import export reference manager. Right, okay, this is what you will see. First thing first, we're going to choose that, X, uh, that XML file by clicking on the folder here. Okay. 
Okay. Desktop reference from EndNote or manually. I'm just going to use anyone. Okay. Open. Okay. Here are the uh, options that I can do. I normally will check only on periodical and year because I want to know the journal name plus the year. Okay. From the meta information of the Mendeley file just now. Okay. And then here I can also reformat my name, the name of the article. If that article initially in whatsoever format, now I want it to be in the format of author year okay, plus title. Yeah, okay, because the default in FSA is only the title. So I can just check in order to have it author year title. If the full document is not available, at this I can generate a document from the abstract. Also, yeah, I want it to be so. So I'm going to import it. At this is now adding that XML file to my FTC project. I hope you can still follow through. Yeah, great. Four documents have already been added to the FSCI project, plus they have been assigned to the respective groups some more. Yeah, respective group of periodical, uh, reference manager import, reference manager last import, as well as reference manager library. Yeah, let me just reference from. So from which library do they come from? They come from Reference from Manila. Okay. Likewise here, additional documents for documents, additional groups. Okay, because we did not create this. This comes from the SML file itself, where we can go check on BMC Public Health articles, for example. We can also check Spring of Plus articles. We can go for year, okay? For example, 2015, 2016. Okay, example. Likewise, uh, we can also uh, take a look at uh, uh, the arrangement okay, of the uh, documents inside of our projects. Now, in Mac, it's also the same. You can simply go to document, import reference manager data, whereby okay, uh, we can, uh, by default, it's already chosen for us the periodical and the year, how you want the name of the document to be okay, of the year, and then you can import that abstract as document now we have to choose file. Okay, the file is on my desktop, which is reference from Mendeley example. So that we can now import it. It says now adding the documents of oh, two. This content was not available. Okay, but it is available. See? Okay, so I can oops, double click. Okay, so I can I'm able to take a look at this document. Yeah. Some of it uh, are here. Okay. Now, um, you will realize there is some difference from Mac and Windows here. If it is Mac, you will have an additional column on your right hand side over here, which is the inspector, which will give you more uh, information okay, as to the objects uh, uh, of your a document, okay, for example, if you click on a document, if you click on codes, it's going to be as such as well. Okay, all right. Likewise, in Windows, we have the additional documents that we uh, can see as well. And they have been listed over here. So it will be, make it easier for us to take a look at the documents. Okay. Oh, I can't realize at the time it is already passing. Okay, no problem. Uh, we shall move on here. Now, I want to find the word frequency okay, in that article. Okay, we have already done the import XML. Now, let's go to number six. Find the word frequency in the literature. Because there are so many wordings inside of our article. We want to know the word frequency, meaning how many times the words have been mentioned. Okay? Uh, maybe they keep repeating the same keywords. If they do, then it will appear more frequency than the other words, okay? The assumption is the more times it is mentioned, then more, uh, more important or more significant that word is, okay? Now, we can do a word cloud or word list, okay? 
Wood cloud is when we want to create a graphical or visual representation of the words. Word list, it will create a table. Okay, for that matter, um, for Windows version, we can do both word cloud and word list. But for Mac, we can also only do word list or we can call it as crunch. C-R-U-N-C-H. Okay, whereby you crunch those words into a table format, it will tell you how many times they appear. Okay, now I'm going to teach you how to do the word cloud as well as word list. Let's go to HSA software. I'm going to open one document. I don't know. This one? Yeah. It's a Word document, then I'm going to show you how to do that in a um, PDF document. Maybe Sister Shakira can help me to um, remove all drawings. Okay, thank you so much. Um, all right, now what I need to do is I will create a Word cloud. On top here, in the document tab for Windows users, you will see the options to explore and analyze. Under option explore and analyze, there is word cloud and word list. That is exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, first thing first, I'm going to click on word cloud and it will generate a visual representation of the words most frequently mentioned in my document. Okay, if you highlight, uh, no, if you bring your cursor to this. Uh, word cloud that we have okay the larger the size meaning the more frequent it is mentioned the smaller the size the smaller times it is mentioned so as we can see the word may mention the most in my article is physical okay and then followed by activities you will see small number appearing here it will tell us how many times it appears sports was mentioned Sports mentioned 10 times, physical 19 times, activity 18, health 11, okay, for that matter. We can also change it to other documents here. Maybe I can do on sports well-being. Yeah, because the topic is well-being. Here, sports, it's a, it's a general article on sports. Okay, right, so you, will, you can also create multiple uh, documents for the word cloud. Second is word list. I'm going to open my document here. I want to do a word list. Yeah. It's the same output but in different format. It's just going to tell you how many times they appear. Yeah, I'm going to sort it based on count. So I will know the word physical was mentioned 19 times, activity was mentioned 18 times, health 11, okay, so on so forth. So that I'll be able to see how many times these words appear? What does this tell us? This will tell us that we can have a general overview of what are the keywords used in our research. And in Mac, because there's no word cloud, but we can create a word crunch, yeah? By going to analysis, word crunch, yeah? I can choose which document that I want to create the table. I can create a table uh, from document number three, document number eight, document number one, okay, for example, I can separate count by object so that it will show me uh, individual uh, documents, how many times these words have been mentioned. So I'm going to click on count. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's, it's adding all the general terms like and the of in. So I'm going to exclude this from English. exclude English wordings. So I'm going to have smoking, physical activity, innovation, all the uh, specific keywords rather than uh, uh, general keywords. Okay. All right. So what does this tell you again? Similar as the Windows version, it will tell you uh, the, the, how many times it appears. So it will give you a general overview what other words being mentioned in that paper. All right, good. <laughs> okay. All right, so um next. 
number six, number seven. Now we have come to the more serious, uh, I'm going to say more serious stuff, because just now we have added the documents, they are in the project. Now we want to start reading. Okay? Now technically, reading in FSA is very easy. You simply read, you highlight, you put the code. But in real life, this is the part that will take the most time. Okay? The reason is because you cannot just highlight simply, you cannot just simply highlight. Okay? We need to, uh, how shall I say this, we need to um, think, yeah, we need to decide what does, if that paragraph will be relevant for our purpose. It depends on your understanding of what has been mentioned in the article. Yeah, uh, because of that, we are going to um, uh, do it for the purpose of the training today. Uh, we can do it very quickly, yeah, so that uh, maybe we don't have to read properly, yeah, but in real life, we still have to read properly because now I'm just teaching the technicals of it how to do the highlighting, how to put comments, for example, yeah, and you can practice that on your own computer as well, yeah, so that uh, you can have that hands on experience. And if you encounter any issues, you can straight away ask me here, okay. And number seven, I want to identify the relevant sections in the literature to highlight the sentences. Okay, in other words, it's to highlight. Lah. Okay, you want to uh, identify the sections. This section, you know, highlight. Yes, this is important. Yes, this is important. So that is going to be in FSA as well. Now, the feature in FSA is called segmenting or you want to create free quotations. Okay, very easy. Segmenting or create free quotations. Um, or in other words, highlighting. Lah. Yeah, so that is what we'll do. I'm going to open one document, maybe, I don't know, Tekka. Let's take a look at Tekka here. Tekka. Yeah, it talks about uh, impact of stretching. So when I read, yeah, so you will see, I'm just going to make it bigger so that you will take a look at it. Some parts of that article is very interesting for my research. So what I do, I will simply highlight it. Okay, highlight, simply highlight. Highlight means click and drag, for example, that one. Now, but it is not yet captured as a quotation. Okay? Why? Because if you click somewhere, it will be hidden. Okay? So what you want to do is you want to highlight and then you are going to go top left hand side here. So it's going to be create free quotation. Okay? Create free quotation. Suddenly, on your right hand side here, you will see that the quotation bar is already there. That quotation bar will follow how many lines that you have highlighted. Okay? If it is a long line, it means a lot of paragraph, okay? a lot of statements in it. For example, here, I can revise it because now it will follow the four lines that I have written. Now, we can have it two paragraphs. Okay? And the quotation bar will follow as well. In FTC MA, it's also the same. Open any document and then you highlight it. For example, okay, you have highlighted it and then you're going to go to quotation from selection on top here. Quotation from selection. Quotation or free quotation, it means it is a highlighted section. But we have not given name to it yet. Okay, if you want to give, we're going to give it later. So let's take a look at number eight. Okay, number seven we have already highlighted, but number eight we want to put. We have thoughts. Ah, this statement needs further uh, elaboration. Yeah, or I do not understand what this author is trying to say. Your critical thoughts, your opinion, your reflection as to the important sections. What is it that you want to write? Or the best part is we can also do 
comments, okay, because we want to paraphrase that situation. If you don't change the words, it's going to be a little bit difficult for you, for us, because we would be repeating or plagiarizing uh, the original author. So what we do is we are going to uh, just take their thoughts, okay, the thoughts of these persons and put them into our own words, okay, for example. <clears throat> so now we're going to give comments to that quotation. Now, uh, we have it already. We're going to right click, okay, in order to put comments to this quotation. We are going to right click on the quotation bar and choose edit comment, okay. Choose edit comment. Here, my comment will be, I need to double check this statement because it is too far on the other. Too harsh. Oops, I need to double check on the statement because it is too harsh uh, by the author, not on. Okay. Harsh. The authors, okay. Likewise, uh, for now, very small. You can make it bigger, for example. Okay. You can add in more information, and you can also add in timestamp, yes, yeah, so that it will show you um, that. And you can save it while saving that comment. We can also generate it in an output later on. Now, can you imagine the purpose of doing this? What are the potential of doing this? Yeah, we can actually highlight this section yeah, and paraphrase that statement. We can say things that we uh, need to remember yeah, uh, or need to uh, take action after this. Yeah, for example, close it. So you will see that there is the comment to this quotation by, by this yellow dot over here. Without clicking, go to the yellow dot and you will see the comments to that quotation. Single click on it, sorry, double click on it in order to do the editing. If you don't edit, uh, uh, if you don't need to edit, then you just simply bring your cursor to it without clicking. Okay. Right. Likewise in Mac, um, because we have the inspector on your right hand side here, okay, the inspector will already give you a, a place where you want to put the comment. Yeah? When you click somewhere else, it's going to be the document, yeah, document 8. Yeah, when you click on the quotation bar, so it's going to be the quotation comment. Okay? This is so cool. It and you will see this is so your comment or your paraphrase version. <clears throat> right, so um, very quickly. Alright, good. So uh, we're done with uh, a lot of things here. Now let's move on to number nine. Okay, in total we have 15. So it's perfect timing. Now let's go to coding. Okay. Uh, now we know the themes. What is it we want to write? Okay. Um, there can be two types of codings. It can be inductive coding or it can be deductive coding. What is the difference between these two? Okay. Uh, for this purpose, I'm going to go back to my uh, presentation here. Okay, um, that talks about uh, output, and then I'm going to introduce to you about uh, okay, inductive coding as well as deductive coding. Uh, begin with deductive coding first. For the purpose of literature review, very often the um, 
code names, okay, or the approach that we read our articles is deductive in nature. Deductive means you already have a set of prior rank concepts in your mind, okay, that is shaping how you read the articles. You read the articles based on the things that you have decided to be relevant for your research. Maybe you have already have a theoretical framework, you already have a conceptual framework. These are the concepts, these are the theories that you want to uh, write in relation to your research. So it's going to be deductive. You're going to begin by identifying the initial themes, okay? and then you're going to uh, give a clear picture of the codes, and then you're going to break down. So you're going to, you know that you are focusing on two things. Okay. You want to know the factors, you want to know the, uh, the, the uh, impacts, okay? what costs something, when that something happened, what impact does it have? Okay? So you, ha you have factor A, factor B, factor C, Cons uh, impact A, impact B, impact C. So all these essentially shaping how you read, because when you read, your mind will be following the structure of what is it that you already decided to be important. When you read, you tend to miss out on the things that it's not important, so you will focus on the important ones. Okay? Um, that is how it works with deductive coding. Deductive means you have already itemized what are the things that you want, so you just read. Okay? The other way around, you also have inductive coding. Inductive, you start reading your articles without any prior codes, without any thinking, what is it that I wish to read? You simply read the article. From the article, you will get the idea. Now, reading for the purpose of literature review can be both ways. It can be inductive, meaning, yeah, I don't know what, so I'm just going to read. Or it can also be deductive. I know already what is it I want to find, so I'm just going to go through the article. Uh -huh. I found this part, this part, this part, this part, for example. Now, I'm going to demonstrate to you both. I'm going to demonstrate deductive as well as inductive. I'm going to move on to deductive first. Okay? For the purpose of literature review, what do you think should be the coding structure for your codes? Okay? Now, I give you an example only here. Because... We know what to put into our literature review chapter. Okay? Very often, I will teach my students that you can have the coding structure for your FSCA uh, project okay? following the literature review chapterization. I repeat, you can keep your coding structure in FSCI following the Chapterization for your chapter two. Okay, example 2.1. Oops, sorry. 2.1. I'm going to go for introduction. Yeah. 2.2. I'm going to go for concept. Concept of sports. 2.2.1. Point point Indoor sports. 2.2.2 2. 2.3 theory 2.1 theory A 2.2.2 theory B for example and then I'm gonna go to benefits benefits of sports Physical benefit, 2.4.2, I'm going to go for psychological benefit, example, just two for the moment, and then 2.5, conclusion, example. Yeah. I find that this is my chapterization for my chapter two. Similarly, this will be the coding structure for our uh, FSCI project, okay? Just give me one minute so that I want to... Uh, okay.
Okay, all right. So this is it. So I'm going to go to FSCI and add this list of codes to the project. This. Yeah, because I, I'll make it smaller so that I can see the, my, my other screen. Okay. Now, in order to add codes to the FSCI project, I will go to home. I'm going to home and then I'm going to choose new entities, new codes. Right? And the system will allow me to create the codes okay? uh, so that I can just bring in code names. Your other code names. Maybe I don't do all. I will just pick the ones that are that I will be using for the Point two, two point three, and finally the conclusion. Okay, so I have added some of the codes because there are many uh, for the purpose of demonstration i'm just going to take 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 these okay 2.1 2.2 2.3 .2 and then 2.4 they have children and then 2.4 2 for 2 1 2 for 2 and then 2.5 conclusion and then i'm going to because this is what we call as deductive because deductive is when you already identify these are the codes so your job now after this after you have added this to the project is you're going to read through the literature and link them to the specific codes okay Create. Yeah, seven codes have already been added to the project. So when I click on the small triangle over here, I will already see the seven codes and they have been arranged accordingly. If I put more numbers, for example, 2.2.1, .2 so it's gonna drag further down. Yes, there, there will be a lot. And you also realize that there are numbers here, 0, 0, 0, 0. It means uh, that how many highlightings do you have so far for that code? In FCI, the highlightings, we call it as quotations. How many quotations that I have for that particular code? At the moment, it's still zero. Zero because we don't have any uh, yet. Okay, likewise, that will be the same method. How to do that in FCI Mac as well. Some of you are using Macbook. Just go to the plus sign. Choose new codes. 2.1, introduction, example. 2.2 concept, 2.3 theory, 2.4 uh, benefits, 2.4.1 physical benefit, 2.4.2 is psychological benefit, 2.5 conclusion. Conclusion. Them. Anytime after this, you want to add the new codes, you simply go to the plus sign and just add new codes. Yeah, so that new codes will be added to the list. Now. Yeah, and then you click on these three triangles over here. You will gonna you, you're gonna see all the seven codes yeah, that I have recently added. Introduction concept theory. So I'm gonna hide this uh, icon. Um so you realize that there are a few ways how to do deductive coding. Okay, the first one is of course you have to identify the code names first. Okay, so um, here you will see. Um, okay, you can you have already created the new entities, new codes. Okay, those are the codes that you have created. Now we can also create free codes because free codes are the ones that we, the codes are there itself. Okay. Our job is to do a drag and drop, okay? meaning why? Okay? Why are we going to do this? Because you already see the list of codes on your left hand side over here. 
introduction until conclusion. And you can see on your right hand side how the document, yeah, your literature, your articles. Your job is to go through the articles. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to go to document number, I don't know, maybe document number two. Yeah, document number two. Yeah, importance of sports because we're talking about benefits here. Right, first thing first, I read through the article by looking, by bearing in mind what are the quotes that I want to look for. Okay, so my mind is already structured to what is it that I want to find. I realize here, aha, uh -huh, this one is talking about child and athletes. So see, this is the introduction section. I should mention this in the introduction section of my chapter two, for example. So I highlight that section. Maybe I can make it bigger so that you can take a look at it. Okay, like this. Okay, I highlight this section until this section. I highlight here. All right. Now, I know that this part talks about background of sports, child athletes, for example. I'm going to go to the list of quotes on my right, hand, left hand side. And this quotes is talking about introduction. Bring the code name introduction and drop on to the highlighted section. And that's it. Okay. When I do that, a few things happen. Number one, that they, uh, there is this quotation bar in the margin area. This quotation bar will follow how many lines that I have highlighted. If I highlighted it four lines like this, it's going to be four lines length. If four lines for the length. If I put it longer or shorter, it will follow accordingly as well. That's number one. Number two, this quotation, you suddenly see a code name attached to it. In other words, this quotation has been coded with 2.1 introduction. That's the second thing that happened. The third thing that happened is on your left hand side here, you're going to see the introduction, code name, plus one groundedness. Just so as to show there is one quotation for that particular code. Let me just do another one, just very quickly. This part talks about theory. Okay? I'm going to bring theory onto the highlighted section, and that's it. That is deductive coding, yeah, drag and drop by way of deductive coding. And then moving on, I also realized that this part talks about physical benefit, bring physical benefits, drag and drop. So it's like playing around, mixing and matching, because it's very easy, the ones that you can see all the quotes on your left hand side, and the document, your target job, your job is to find the evidence from your literature that talks about those concepts that we have identified earlier. Okay, now things start to get interesting because this part is talking about theory. You realize just now we have already created one theory, right? Yeah, here you have one theory with one groundedness. Now I have a second statement that talks about theory as well. I'm going to bring theory code and drop onto the highlighted section. This part has been coded with theory, but the best part is theory now has two groundedness. Just to show, as we read along our article, we do codings, you will realize that your code names have increased in groundedness. You are still building up your list of codes, building up the groundedness of your uh, wordings, okay, of your how many groundedness that you have. For that document right now moving on to another article example so i'm just going to choose another article this part very quickly this part talks about physical benefit this part talks about psychological benefit moving on this part repeats physical benefit And maybe last one, this one talks about theory. Um, again, maybe concept of sports. Okay, so my job is now to read. Okay, and I don't have to remember which article says what because now Atlas TI is building up my list of quotations for that particular quote. I just need to sit back, read, and decide that statement should be talking about what quote name. 
okay? It will be easy, okay? Because my job is simply to do that. Um, let me just go very quickly to this document. We have done drag and drop. Now, list coding is also uh, a type of deductive coding, but it's very similar to what we are doing now, okay? Uh, because the last one that I did was concept of sports, right? Uh, I can also maybe move, move along to another article, okay? Move along to another article, okay? And maybe just use the track type if you I always use the track pack so that it will be my the the size that I want it to be okay, like here okay um I realized that this part maybe this part is talking about introduction again because it's about past study bring introduction other than drag and drop I can also do list coding here okay which is very easy select that one okay this one is talking about psychological benefit go to list coding over here and a list of codes will appear so that I now can choose which one. Okay, maybe it's psychological benefit. So that's it. It's essentially the same thing. I can just drag and drop or I can choose from list coding or quick coding. Quick coding means it will select this quotation with the most recently used code. So if the last one I used was psychological benefit, this part I select and I do quick coding, it will follow the last code that I have used. Psychological benefit again. Yeah. Likewise, in Mac as well, we can do that. All the code names are already here, so our job is simply to read through. This part is talking about introduction. Drag and drop. Remember what our strategy just now is to drag and drop, drag, and drop. Yeah, moving on to another article maybe. Yeah, this part talks about physical. Yeah, this part is talking about physical benefit. This part is talking about psychological benefit. And this part is talking about uh, concept. Okay, like what? Moving on to another article, uh, here, this one, okay. Very easy. Our job is to go through the article. But now, as I am reading, I find that there is another statement, okay. Another statement, just uh, make it bigger, maybe, okay. Make it bigger so that you will see it. Um, here, this is talking about healthy lifestyle. If you do sport, it will lead towards healthy lifestyle, okay? So, but I cannot do a drag and drop because there is no healthy lifestyle code here. Now, we start to do inductive coding. You realize because deductive means you already have the list of codes. You go through the article. Now, it's the other way around. I read the article, aha, uh -huh, this is a new idea. I just want to add on to the list. So, what I do is I will just simply Select, yeah, and then I'm going to go to add coding over here. For MacBook users, you're going to go to the top here, and then you're going to choose add coding. I'm going to type here 2.4.3. Why? Because that is the following sequence for my benefits. Yeah? Improve lifestyle. Okay, like that. Add. Now, this particular quotation has been coded with improved lifestyle code, and improved lifestyle code has been added to the list here with the groundedness one, just to show. But after that, as I read, this part is also talking about improved lifestyle, so that I can now just drag and drop. Yeah? Now, the origin of improved lifestyle is it is inductive coding and not deductive coding like our uh, other examples. Yeah? Um, as well, yeah, um, as I am reading through, yeah, in Windows as well, as I am reading through, I find that, maybe I go to Kaposi here, okay, Kaposi is an article, okay, where this first part is talking about, just, uh, yeah, this part is probably talking about uh, improved lifestyle, okay. Let's go to open coding. Okay, for Windows users, for Mac users, you're going to go to add coding. 
For Windows users, you're going to go to Open Coding. Click on Open Coding and choose here uh, 2.4.3 into Presta. Great. Okay, so improved lifestyle already um, over here. Also, improved lifestyle has been added to the list of goods. Okay, so um, okay, the first one is open coding. The second one I, I want to talk about is code in vivo. Okay, here it is. Okay, two things: open coding as well as code in vivo. Now, code in vivo means verbatim. Okay? It means word for word, whatever that I have highlighted. So now, uh verbatim it means if i have highlighted lifestyle i go to code in vivo that particular word lifestyle will be coded with a new code name called lifestyle okay so let me just demonstrate to you how to do that okay um when i read through yeah maybe i go to i don't know uh, here sports and development notes here um Improve public health. Improve public health. Okay, I have highlighted improve public health. Let me just make it bigger. Improve public health. And when I go to code in vivo over here, you see the select the, the description, it will use the selected code, a selected text as a code. Okay, now click. Click on Code in Vivo, you will see uh -huh, this part has already been coded with Improved Public Health. You see, if I highlight Improved Public Health, the code name will be Improved Public Health, as well as Improved Public Health will be added to the list of codes with one ground. Okay, now, by showing this, I am sure you will realize that for Code in Vivo, it is very in maintaining the, the the original terminology used by the okay so if the author has mentioned improved public health that's going to be improved public health so it's not going to say better quality of public health this could be our name uh, our own terminology so but the author's terminology is maintained okay uh, the second one is you will also realize that for in vivo coding we cannot highlight an entire sentence or an entire paragraph Otherwise, the entire sentence of that entire paragraph will become the code name. Okay, so I hope you will realize that. Okay, good. Now, number 11. Number 11 is to get the relevant sections. If you have any questions, you can just type in the chat box and we will um, uh, revisit them uh, after this. Okay, now. To get the relevant sections of the specific keywords, um, that wording is a bit confusing. Let me just explain to you. Um, I have an article, and in that article, I want to find a specific keyword. You must be familiar with Control F, right? Control F or Command F is to find a keyword or a phrase. Um, now I want to find the relevant keyword. Yeah. But I just don't, I, I do not want only that keyword. I want the entire sentence containing that keyword. Okay. In Atlas CI, the function we call it as auto coding. Yeah, auto code or auto coding. Um, example instruction I'm going to give here. Example instruction number one Dear Atlas CI, okay. please find. The keyword help. Number two, highlight the sentence containing the keyword help. First, I want to find the keyword health in my article. 
Once found, I want to say to highlight the entire sentence containing that keyword and please code with the code name. Okay. So here is the code name. Okay. That is the instruction. <sighs> This is, I'll just make it go to one page, okay? The instruction for autocode means, I wanted to say to find the keyword, help. Once found, this highlight, I don't want to highlight only one word. I want to highlight the entire sentence containing the keyword. And number three, please code it with the code name help, okay, for example. Now, that is exactly what I'm gonna do. I will um, go to FCI. I have to find the keyword health, okay? A lot of words health here. How do I know that? I just do a word cloud and I will see the various words being mentioned in this article, one of which is health. This is the one that I want to do, okay? I'm gonna go back to uh, the one. Okay? Because I have created uh, the word cloud on his, okay? All right, now, auto coding. Go to auto coding over here. You remember the instruction? Okay, the instruction goes please find the keyword health. Highlight the sentence containing the keyword and code it with the code name health. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. Search for the keyword health. Yeah, of course, I want to ignore case. I don't uh, ignore case. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I, I, don't mind the spelling, the, the capital letters or small letters. I just want the word health. If it's small letters, also I want. Capital letters, also I want. Mix, also I want. Okay. Now, first instruction, please find the keyword. Done. Number two, expand to. Okay. I want it to be highlighting the sentence. Okay. So that's why I choose the sentence. Okay. And then I can choose which code name. Okay. I need just going to create a new code here, is health. Okay, right, that's it. The instruction goes, find the keyword health. Once found, please highlight the sentence. Okay, that highlighted sentence should be coded with the keyword code name health. Okay, now, before I go to start, I need to explain about confirm matches over here. Confirm matches means I want to say to confirm with me each match every time it finds that sentence containing the keyword. I don't want to say to automatically code it without my permission. Please ask me each time. So that's how it works, whereby we will actually be getting to say to confirm the matches each time with us. So having done that, now I'm going to click on start. Let's say I'm going to bring you to the first sentence containing the keyword, which is a URL. I don't want the URL. It doesn't make any significance. It doesn't contribute towards my write-up. So I'm going to skip it. So I have the option either to code it or to skip it. Skip. Second one is the title. Ooh, I don't want the title. It is a title of an article. So skip it again. The first sentence goes... Although research interest and physical activity, blah, blah, blah. So you see the word health is mentioned here two times. Still, because it's within one sentence, the first word health and the second word health. But because it is mentioned in the same sentence, so it will be highlighted only once. Okay? Yeah, I, felt, I find that this is relevant and important, significant for my research. I will code it. At least I will code it and bring you to the next sentence. Is it relevant? Yes. Could it? The, the next sentence, ooh, I don't want this. So I'm just going to skip it. It's a title, subtitle, skip it. Skip. Yeah, could it. Okay. Subtitle again, no. No, I don't want it. I don't want. Yeah, I want it. So could it. So you see, the idea be behind autocoding is, 
it will help you to show the context in which that keyword is used. It will not only show you that keyword, in fact, there is an option for you to see only that keyword, but in my opinion and experience, I find that it will only highlight the keywords, okay? Uh, you might miss out on the bigger picture in which that keyword is used, yeah? I'm going to repeat the same thing uh, for our... When you first start with an article, what kind of coding do you suggest we do first? Is it deductive first or maybe we go to find an autocode? Mm, if, it's the f if you're doing literature review, very often from my experience, we start with deductive first. The reason being, we already know the sketchy ideas, what is it you want to write for your literature review chapter. You cannot go point blank in order to read articles. It's better that you have some sort of guidance. Although it's not complete yet, okay? you know something that you want to find, but it's okay if it's not perfect because you can add on to the list again. Okay? Alternatively, if it's a very new topic for you, you do not have any idea yet what is contained in that, that uh, topic, this discussion or the pattern of ideas in that topic so you can start with inductive first okay mm, okay fine yeah you can go to find an auto code as well but auto code might not be your first choice because it's a computer doing its thing um, the best thing is still deductive and inductive. The option to do autocoding is actually to pinpoint to you the location in which it is used. At the end of the day, we have many codes from inductive and deductive. Yeah, very often we will have a lot. Um, how, uh, how do we manage or organize them? Very, uh, for the purpose of uh, literature review, this problem can be minimized because we follow the chapterization of our chapter two. But for qualitative analysis, very often you will end up with a lot of codes that you might uh, be missing out, okay? You need to see the relationship between one code to another, which might take some time, but you will very often you will find some of the codes overlapping with one another. If it is overlapping, then you might uh, reduce the redundancy or the overlapping by way of merging uh, the codes. Okay? <clears throat> okay? All right. <clears throat> Right, good, good, very good. When you're asking questions, uh, sometimes I'm also learning new things and uh, I know that you're actually thinking about the potential of using this uh, feature. <coughs> if you're only listening, it is one-way communication. Um, I, I'm not sure if you're actually following me still. I hope you are uh, following the discussion. I've shown it for Windows. Now let me just very quickly show it for Mac. Um, Again, it's the same, okay? Um, I'm just gonna go, in fact, the same article, I, I want to practice, but because autocoding depends very much on keyword, it can work on a text document. It cannot work on a scan document, okay? If you scan the document into image or a secured PDF, for example, <coughs> you will not be able to do the autocoding, okay? But for Mac, uh, users, let's go to code autocoding. Here, the same instructions. I'm going to type here the keyword health. Okay. Uh, ignore case. Good. And then extending as that match, I'm going to change it to sentence because I want to find the sentence containing the keyword and to code it with the code name health, right? So I cannot do it from drop and down because it's not here. So I'm just going to create a new code. New code health, and now I can do the drop down menu in order to get the word health. Okay, uh, then yeah, I can go to one by one. You remember Windows has the confirm matches option, Windows uh, Mac also has the confirm matches, but it doesn't say confirm matches, you just need to go next, next, next. Meaning it's one by one. Lah. Okay, one by one, I can choose if that paragraph is important, I'm going to code it. If it's not important, I'm just going to go to next. Okay, so it's still a matter of doing it one by one unless you choose to code all. Code all here will code all of the sentences containing the keyword so that 
it will be coded with the code name health. Yeah, because that's the instruction that we can put off. Or you can just go to one by one like this. I always recommend. Okay, so what do you think my recommendation is? Is it better to confirm matches or go one by one or straight away highlight all, code all without going through one by one? Okay, so I always advise my, my students, please confirm matches all time, all the time. Please do it one by one, not by way of coding all because very often it is not very relevant. Okay, it could be uh, only uh, part of it. Yeah. Yeah. We have a new student. Mm -hmm. Um, and then um <coughs> love you. Okay. Uh, thank you. I love you. <coughs> All right. So um like I was saying, please confirm matches each time so that we can control the quality of our quotation. If you don't confirm matches, meaning you quote all, you might get a lot of the sentences containing the keyword, but it might be the header or the footer of that article. It could be the list of references. It could be a heading, a subheading, a title, subtitle. Uh, wordings inside of a table, for example. So uh, actually you are when you do it one by one, meaning you confirm matches, you can control the quality of all of your quotation. Okay, now let's move on. Yep, I'm gonna save the project and then I'm gonna move on. Yep, this is it. Oh, sorry, okay, here. Uh, number 12, okay, uh, all together we have 15 things I want to cover. Number 12, I want to find the word frequency of the coded sections. Last time we have already done it for word cloud for that document. Now it's only word cloud for that particular code, okay, because we have done work on the article, so now we can take a look how it looks like. Um, let's open the code manager here, okay. And then for the benefit example, benefit, physical benefit, what have people mentioned about physical benefit? Yeah, I can go to Wood Club and take a look at it. Whatever that I have highlighted for the code name, physical benefit. So you will see physical, activity, health factors, sports, for example. I can also take a look at psychological, physical, oh, again, the word physical was mentioned. I can also go for improved quality of life, yeah, preference, physical, counseling, reporting. So these are the words frequently mentioned for that particular code name. Okay. Mm. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. All right. So, um, yeah, okay. I can take a look at whatever that have been coded for that particular code. Now, this feature is very useful, uh, particularly because we want to take a look at what the literature or the authors have mentioned in relation to that code. Okay? Rather than we only see the code and the quotation, now we can see a breakdown of the frequency of that words for that particular code. Okay? What else? Yeah, I can also do a word list for that. Okay, let's go to word manager. Word list. Also, it will list down the words that have been coded okay, with that particular. I can arrange it based on the count. Okay, so it will show me yeah, three times have been mentioned activity, physical, can, and factors. Oh, okay. Um, it's a very good question by Shabnam Farooq here. Can we add the highlighted sentences very similar in the literature review or do we need to change the words or the sentences? Um, I always use this uh, strategy. If that person makes a quotation which is very relevant or very important 
for your research, like it's a famous statement or saying, then you can take it word for word and cite it accordingly. However, very seldom we find such situation. So I always recommend, please paraphrase. Please do not put the original wording that you have highlighted. This is the reason why we do um, comment to that quotation. When you comment on that quotation, you can put your own words okay, for that particular quotation so that in the output, it will come out both. It will come out the quotation together with your comment. It will come out the original statement plus your own paraphrase question, which will be very useful because that's the idea behind we want to avoid plagiarism, of course, and also we want to put our thoughts into that idea um, rather than we repeat what uh, authors in the literature have already mentioned. Very good question, Shavnam. Okay, good. Next. Number 13. I have ideas to write relating to my literature review exercise. Okay, the ideas that I want to write are maybe um, in relation to um, your project, okay, your research, your literature review exercise. So, uh, in order to do that, <coughs> in that case, <coughs> you will actually go to home, new entities, new memo. Okay. Right, so home, new entities, new memo. Here I'm going to type um, uh, research diary. What is it that I have done today? Okay. Research diary in relation to the literature review project. <coughs> and the system will open. You will now be able to put in maybe make the size bigger. 24 maybe. Today, I for the purpose of literature. Okay, right. And also put a timestamp. Okay. Today, I learned at TCF for the purpose of literature review. You can also do other things like adding pictures, hyperlinks, okay? Adding hyperlinks, oh yeah, because I click on picture, right? Okay, you can add pictures or you can highlight certain action and then click hyperlinks, okay? For example, after you're done, you are going to save, save the memo. Now, also the memo will now appear here. Okay, research diary created by Ani Munira. You can also create another memo, for example. <clears throat> uh, to do. <clears throat> Always use 24 because of the size. <clears throat> Things to do. Search. Database for keyword outdoor sports. Add to Atlas TR and write chapter two. Supervision. Good supervisor, for example. Okay, you can put numbers if you want. Yeah, you can just, uh, you know, while we are at it, I will just add numbers, yeah, yeah for example. And timestamp, I always do timestamp because the timestamp will actually help us to keep track of, um, yeah, of things that we do. Save it again, so now I have two memos over here. Likewise, in mine, I can also create Plus sign, new memo, I'm, I'm now going to, here I can change the name of the memo, change it to uh, things to do, for example, and here I can type in all the information that I need, okay, 24, things to do, okay, likewise, one, two, example, okay, what is it that we want to do? Okay, now once we have saved it, project save, we're gonna have one memo over here. 
things to do. I can also create other memos for research diary. I can create memos for reflection, thoughts, critical thinking, um, what um, maybe a topic on outdoor sports, your own idea about outdoor sports you can type in the as a memo because a memo is a space that you will write things relevant to your research. Here is relevant for your literature review. It will be very much similar to the uh, sticky notes, the ones that we have pen and paper, uh, well, the ones we have sticky notes, you can stick it somewhere, okay, different colors some more. Um, it's also similar to our notebook here, yeah? a notebook that you can have, um, for example, what is it you want to write in the notebook? Now because everything is working on the computer, so you can um, do the memo inside of uh, at the CI also, okay? Now it's 12.40, I think it's perfect timing, but I want to show you <clears throat> How to generate reports, okay? There are a lot of ways that we can generate reports. Only two things left. I want to show you how to generate reports. And number two, I want to create backup, okay, of my project. Generating reports, a lot of types of reports. Number one, uh, let's go to home. You can generate report for the documents, for example. I'm gonna click on documents. You can generate the report here, okay, for example. And the best part is you can customize how you want the report to be. Do you want it to be based on grouping? Yeah, you can document group. Yeah, you can also based on uh, other options. Okay, over here. Uh, how do you want the report to be produced? Do you want it to be to put the dates, type of content, comments, groups, uh, maybe content, maybe quotation, for example. So you can just start and it will generate the report, okay? It depends on what is the item that you have done so that you can customize it accordingly. Okay? It will come out in the format of textual, okay? that you can save it into DOC and DOCX uh, as well, okay? Like this, four documents. Document number two is the importance of sports blog. Okay. Document number three, Okay, here is because it's arranged based on document a group, right? Okay, now uh, close it. We can also generate reports based on codes. Okay, I want to generate codes report plus the quotation. Now, this is I highly recommend to do it based on codes uh, output um, so that it can go to report again here. Okay, um, I want it to be. Uh, maybe quotation, contents, comments. If you have comments, so it will come up as well. Okay, and then uh, users get okay, free reports. Okay. Yes. Okay. Will our works maintain after the software license has expired? Yes, it will. But if you have a full version already, you do a lot of projects, you do a lot of quotations. Then it revert to a trial version because uh, of the expiry date of the student license, two years. Um, you cannot do any editing on the project anymore, okay? Unless if you extend it or you open it in another project uh, so that when you create backup, you can create in another project, in another computer that has the license, you can start continue to work on it, okay? Right, good. So here, you can see if you do code output, code report, it will already be in the format of your, it, it will already be in the sequence or the, uh, the arrangement of your chapterization, of your chapter two, because we have created the coding structure to be 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, so that is how it will appear in the code report as well. Let's take a look. 2.1, introduction. Importance of sports block mentioned this. Sport and health blog mentioned this. 2.2 concept of sports. Sports and development notes mentioned this. As for the theory, 2.3 theory, importance of sports blog mentioned this. Benefits of sport, physical benefit, phys psychological benefit, improved lifestyle. Can you see that when you structure the coding list in ATCI, you follow the structure of your chapter two, the report from your ATLAS CI will already be in the sequence of your chapter two. 
Your job now is to go through that output okay, in order to see any similarities or not because we're not going to say Ahmad, say, ah, see, you see 2.4.3, I have renamed it to Kaposi and Author Year. So author year say what, author year say what, rather than document name say what, document name say what, okay? So please put something meaningful for the purpose of our output, for the purpose of our literature review. Please, I recommend you to put the name of that PDF document or your literature in the format of author year so that it will be um, uh, uh, smart enough, okay, so that the output will be author year say what, author year say what, rather than we have document name say what, team say what, okay, for example. Um, likewise, in Mac, okay, um, uh, if you want to achieve something like Windows uh, can achieve just now, very easy, very similar, in fact, a lot of reports that we can generate, we can go to document output, you can also go to quotation output. Yeah, uh, why not? I do quotation output here. Quotation are the statements that I uh, have highlighted. These statements are the ones that I want to write into my literature review chapter. So quotation output, I'm going to go to quotation by quote with comments. Okay? Quotation output, quotation by quotes with comment. What does it mean? I want these all the highlighted sections to be arranged by quote. And if I have any comments, please add the comments as well. Okay, so this is how it will look like. Okay. The output from Mac is improved version because when you do the selection over here, you can see a preview on your left hand side as well. If this is what you want, please have it. Yeah, please, please uh, choose it. Yeah, I will now um, comment here yeah, in what document plus the content of that document so you see this is the name of the document and this is the highlighted section this is the name of the document and this is the highlighted section i can preview that output straight away in mac but not in windows yeah um uh, so in mac yeah i can see if this is what i want this is what i like i will now save it Save into maybe desktop my literature review project just to show you how it looks like, okay? Because it will be saved as DOC or DOCX. We can uh, edit it after this using uh, Microsoft Word. Likewise, in Windows just now, yeah, you can save the project, uh, sorry, save the report in what format? In DOC or DOCX also, okay? Here it is. Yeah. This is the report. Oh, very big. Let me just make it smaller. Yeah. My literature review project, to power introduction. What document? McGee CE mentioned this. Yeah. And then Sports and Health blog mentioned this. Sports and Development note mentioned this. Okay, McGee again. Yeah. Yeah. It will be very helpful. Okay, especially that now is already in the arrangement of our chapter two. Any amendments that you do to your chapter two, you are encouraged to change it straight away in your FSTI code list. Okay, so that it will be tally. Sometimes, very often, it's not sometimes, but very often, we will uh, be rearranging our headings and subheadings for our chapter two. So that's why we will do this. Now, I always mention chapter two, but sometimes we also have a lot of references in other chapters as well. And the same principle applies. Lah. You can do the coding plus the numbering for that quotes so that you will follow your uh, chapterization for your write-up. Oh, six question. Let me just go very quickly. Um, all right. Uh, is it compulsory standard to use as an optional? How do you switch between Windows and Mac? Oh, yeah, different out of topic. I use parallel. Uh, parallel. Uh, I install a parallel application on my MacBook so that I can run Windows on my uh, MacBook computer. Can we add the highlighted sentences? Okay, yeah. Okay, I have already um, addressed all your questions. 
Uh, meanwhile, if you have any questions, you can just send them because I only have one more thing left that I want to share with you. And in fact, this is very, very important because our work is saved inside a computer, in a software, in a computer. Any risk to the computer also serves as a risk to our literature review project. Okay? Um, it is very important for us to create backups. Okay? Now, backups. Okay, let me just go very quickly to um, the document. Okay, create backups. Number 15. Oops, sorry. Module number 15 is to create backup of my project. We can export the project. Okay, export the project and save it somewhere safe. Please do not export the project as a backup. Put it onto your desktop or my document. Yeah. Please put it somewhere else, which is separate from the computer and preferably somewhere safe. Lah, okay? Definitely somewhere safe. Or you can also put it on the cloud okay? so that it will serve as your backup. Now, backups, when you do by way of project export, it will actually save your project in its current state. So if you have saved it uh, January 2020, for example, it will be up to the stage of 20, January 2020. Any amendments that you do to the original project, it will not capture in the backup. Nah. Okay, it makes sense because when you burn something on a CD, you put it somewhere, of course, that will not automatically uh, update. Yeah, you need to create another backup for the February 2010, uh, 2020, March 2020, April 2020 for the uh, backup, for example. Now, in Windows, let's do that. In Windows, first you need to save the project, okay? and then you're going to go to File, Export, Project Bundle. Okay? File, Export, Project Bundle. Let's take a look what it says. The Project Bundle compiles all your project data and media. All your documents, all your highlightings, all your code names, all your memos. Okay, the bundle will reflect the current state of your loaded project. Okay, so that let's create a bundle. Okay, bundle project bundle. At the moment, I'm going to save it on my desktop. Okay, so you auto capture my project name, author as well as the date, and the format is at the a project. So it's at approach. Yeah, this is the complete backup file for my project save then I put it on my desktop <clears throat> so okay meanwhile I'm gonna go to Mac as well okay here file project save oops sorry actually see I Project save. Oh, yeah, I have already saved it. And then I'm going to go to project export project. Same, same menu as Windows. My literature review project, I'm going to save it on my desktop. Okay. This is how it looks like. Others. Okay, so my ATCI project uh, for uh, Mac, my ATCI project for Windows. Okay, likewise here, this is my literature review project and this is my literature review project from Mac as well as from Windows. Yeah, uh, I'm supposed to finish at 12.45 so that I can give you some time for questions, but I think I have addressed um, your questions immediately after you have sent it. But um, before I address the questions, let us take a look and brainstorm where do we want to save this backup file, okay? This backup file, like I said, let's put it somewhere else. Please do not leave it on the desktop like this. If I do save it on my desktop, so there goes my laptop, there goes my backup file as well. Okay? So if you synchronize it with the cloud, so you will have a backup file in the cloud. If something happens, not only to be like in relic bytes, but if it happens to our computer uh, crash, okay? but if it happens, you can reformat it, get a new computer for example, synchronize back from the cloud so that you can have that exact same project that you have created bundle last time. Okay, right. So, uh, let me just go very quickly. Eight questions. 
Um, can we call all references that we have coded? Mm, okay. The way is the function of code co-occurrence? Uh, I do not cover that in this session. Um, normally, I will cover that in my qualitative analysis class because today my sharing is on literature review. But if it's important for you to uh, know about co-occurrence is whatever there is, not to say overlapping, but uh, similar highlighting between one statement to another. Okay? For example, very often we're going to have one statement and then one statement and then one statement. But co-occurrence means one statement and then it, there is a little bit of overlapping from one sentence to another sentence, co occur again. So whichever that has one, quote, one quotation touching with another quotation, it means that that overlapping section is actually very important because it relates to the first quote and it also relates to the second quote. We can generate the co-occurrence in our computer, okay? For example, like this. Oops, I'm going to close this one. Okay. Um, by way of analyzing and go to co-occurrence table so that I will know which part is co-occurring with one another. Okay. Um, I have to say to the organizer, we might take some time just to show this, okay. Uh, what is co-occurring with one another? Uh, normally, I have done it a lot for here. Improved lifestyle, likewise here. It's like building a table for our um, for our because I have done one, another one, and another one. In health, in health as well. Okay, so oh, how come there is none? So I'm just gonna select all. Ah, maybe because I do not occur with one another. Hmm, no occurrence at all. Yeah, okay? just to show you if there is anything. So the values will be inside here, just to show that I have uh, some quotes that are uh, over, that are occurring with uh, another quote. Okay, so it will tell us the values inside here, what is the part that have occurred. Uh, yeah. Home, navigator. Okay. Okay, good, good. Can we call references that we have coded? Mm, yes, you can, okay, by way of coding here. So you can go, for example, uh, psychological benefit. When you double click on the code name, it will appear all the codings, uh, the quotations that you have coded. Single click on any one of them will, uh, will bring you back to the original location. If it is important for you to revisit your list of codings, okay, so you, this is the strategy that you can use. Double click on the code name, for example, here physical benefit. It will bring out the list of quotations. Single click on any one of them, it will bring you back to the original location. Yeah, likewise, that this is very useful yeah, because you remember at the beginning of the session, I said the problem with us reading is we, I myself, read a lot and then I cannot recall back which author said what, but in this situation, I do not need to remember because I can see I will remember them for me. If I want to recall at any time, I can just do that strategy. I can just single click and it will bring me back to the original location. Okay, if one term has two different spelling, for example, three-dimensional or 3D, means that we have to manually search for the two spellings. No, not necessarily, especially if you are uh, doing autocoding, for example. Here, when you do autocoding on specific keyword, health, uh, maybe I do on sport. Okay, sport, I can do a search or all function like this. It's a pipe, okay? Uh, pipe is...
Excuse me, doctor. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, we are almost uh, one. So, yeah. so uh, you, you need more time to continue? Yeah, I think maybe five minutes more. Is that okay? Oh, it's, uh, it's okay, okay. Okay, thank you. All right, so the pipe symbol is the straight line on the same button as your backslash. Here it is. Is the pipe straight line with the same button as the backslash on your keyboard. Okay, so when you do sport or exercise or workout, so you are actually doing 3D dimensional or 3D, okay, three dimensional or 3D. So you can do uh, or icon uh, like that as well. Okay, good. Uh, is there a way that there can be function for web add-on that we can use browsers to highlight and add coding? If you want to uh, highlight from website, uh, in NTCM, we don't have a specific button, but you can print that website as a uh, PDF so that you can add it to NTCI after this. Can NTCI do auto backup or do we need to manually um, auto recovery save? Yes, but uh, backup will be manual. Uh, is it we need to create project bundle every time we edit the project? Yes, you need to create a project bundle every time you edit the project with a significant change. If you simply are open to do reading and a small dot, no need. Lah. But if you do a very large or significant change, then it's highly recommended. Please do a bundle each time. Okay, so I think uh, I have already uh finish okay i have completed everything that i wanted to share with you i am sorry for taking uh, some time uh, extra uh, from what i am supposed to uh, finish so um, if there are any more questions okay um right so you can be in contact uh, with me uh, uh, on my facebook okay for example I will just go very quickly to Facebook. Please uh, connect with me. This is my uh, profile on Facebook. Okay. Okay. Here. Okay. Um, meanwhile, it's loading. I want to return back the microphone to the host. Uh, brother, can you please uh, take back the session? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, doctor, for a uh, nice session. And uh, Alhamdulillah, almost three hours without any break. Uh, Sorry, nice am I supposed to give a break? Yeah, no, no break. Oh, normally, in, normally, in our class, we, we do we take break uh, sometime, but this time for um, Ramadan. So, uh, great to know that everybody is so excited. Yes. So excited and Alhamdulillah, we uh, all pray for you as well, uh, for your uh, support actually. Uh, even you are, you are also fasting and without taking any water and also non-stop talking. Almost three hours, Alhamdulillah, we got a very uh, nice session from you. And uh, now I want to ask uh, if, if anyone have any more question, uh, maybe you can write write your name so that I can uh, give floor. Anyone? I think uh, the questions okay. have already been asked yeah. and I, think, I have addressed them uh, immediately. Yeah, uh, I, think, I, I think uh, all questions already um, answered, right doctor? Yeah, so, I think so. Okay, so... Uh, Maybe I, I have missed something Sister Shakira can highlight to me uh, if any questions that I have uh, accidentally missed out. I think most most questions are answered, Dr. Dr. Adi, ex, except just some administrative question about the price and the license. Okay. So I, I answer according to my personal. Yeah, I saw you responded. Thank you very much for assisting me. <laughs> okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. Um, hopefully, this session uh, will be mostly uh, helpful for every one of us, those who attended. And inshallah, we, we, we will submit this, uh, uh, our recording, full session in our channel, so that later on also, those who missed and also need to recap some um, joint uh, later on and some, uh, some maybe missing some uh, speech. So everything, alhamdulillah, we will submit it uh, to our channel uh, 
uh, if any question doctor already have given uh, her uh, contact information hopefully uh, they can they can contact directly to doctor and uh, alhamdulillah uh, for today's uh, nice session uh, thank you everyone uh, uh, brother, think, uh, can i say something yes yes please uh, i think uh, it is a very good idea if everybody can switch on your webcam so that we can take a group photo yes that, that's nice <laughs> yes uh, so uh, dear brothers and sisters those who are attending please uh, switch on your video the okay so i see in in the screen one screen is not enough for me to capture the all photos because, right, right? alhamdulillah and many many participants mostly 100 plus participants here directly joined uh, in our zoom session and some some of them uh, watching directly to facebook live and also i see many maybe 15 to 20 shares in in different groups so hopefully it will be helpful for every one of us okay still i see some some others um, did not open their video if everyone come then uh, then we will take a snap uh, i think you can are you doing it are you taking the snap yeah, I, I'm, I'm taking and also you can take, no problem, from your side. Okay, all right. Okay. Is anyone here coming? <laughs> anyone else? Yeah, maybe it's the finish also. Okay, so... Multiple pages, right? Yeah, we have four pages. Three pages. No, I see uh, my video is still not appeared. Okay, now I'm here. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay, so uh, I'm taking one snap. And also, there is two pages. Another page. Those who are missing, inshallah, we'll see another time. Okay then, doctor. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe uh, today, today we can uh, end up our session, and inshallah we'll come up with a new session very soon. And uh, all of us, please uh, connect with our uh, official channel: Facebook, YouTube, um, Instagram, Twitter. Everyone we have uh, in every uh, everywhere we we are trying to. Uh, keep our updated information so hopefully you will get many information there and stay connected with us thank you for your support uh, to PCSS and also CPS Brother Buhi, we have the we have the um, the feedback form okay, chat okay. earlier yeah thank you uh, to re remind me so we have one uh, Sorry, I, I, I'm giving you the link for the, uh, after the session, sorry. So we have one evaluation form. So hope, uh, I, I will request everyone to um, fill up the form. I'm, I'm sharing the link here in the uh, okay, comment box. So there is the link. So I would like to request everyone, please give your uh, comments if, if anything uh, we need to improve and we hope again we will we'll, uh, be with uh, our Dr. Ani Munira. So thank you all. I think uh, before this we can say we can recite Asr, Surah Al Asr, and we can take leave from here. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you.